This is CBC Here and Now. Add another one to the list. Four police officers are now under investigation. Need something? Got something? A giving campaign goes viral. Can't keep up with messages of support from the community. Bad news is coming again for would-be members of the Halibu Band. Those expectations, and honestly, will become disappointments for many. I'm tracking rain in the east, developing flurries and snow squalls for western parts of Newfoundland, and a weekend system for all that will bring heavy rain and some heavy snow. The details are coming up. Well, there are now four police officers in this province that have been investigated this year. Three are with the RNC and one is with the RCMP. The agencies doing the investigating are serious incident response teams from out of province. In one of those cases, CBC News has learned no charges will be laid. Here now is Glenn Payette reports. CERT Nova Scotia was called in this past July to investigate an allegation that a male RCMP officer in Gander sexually assaulted a woman. The head of CERT Nova Scotia says he hasn't written his final report, but when it's done... That report will contain no charges being laid in that. CERT Nova Scotia is investigating two other matters in Newfoundland and Labrador, both involving RNC officers. Yesterday it was learned that an RNC officer is under investigation for an alleged sexual assault that happened several years ago, but was only reported this past summer. And it's come to light that another RNC officer is also being investigated by CERT Nova Scotia. Scott, who is relatively new in his position, says he only learned of that investigation today and can't really say very much about it. But he will say... It's not of a uh, assault of nature, sexual or domestic or anything like that. So there are now three RNC officers under investigation, including Joe Smythe by the Alberta Serious Response Team. Smythe fatally shot Donald Dunphy in his Mitchellsbrook home in April 2015. He's being investigated by CERT Alberta for his handling of a motor vehicle stop in May. Given the investigations involving members of the RNC, we asked for an interview today with Chief Joe Bolin. We were told he wasn't available because he was tied up in meetings. Glenn Pay at CBC News, St. John's. The jury is still out at the Brandon Phillips first degree murder trial. The six men and six women spent the day deliberating at Supreme Court. Here now is Fred Hutton has been covering this trial and joins us now live. Fred, what happened today? Well, Anthony, it was another day of hurry up and wait here at Supreme Court and still no verdict from the jury after another full day of deliberations. Now, you may recall last night we reported on uh, CBC News and here and now that the uh, jury had asked to hear some evidence from the case. Turns out it was part of the judge's charge. Seven minutes and 20 seconds of it. Now, we can't tell you what it was. Uh, because we weren't in the courtroom to hear it, but it was a portion of uh, Justice Valerie Marshall's charge to the jury. They had a listen to that early this morning at about 9.30, between 9.30 and 10, went back into the deliberation room and basically stayed there all day with the exception of taking a lunch break. They were in there the entire day until about 5.20 this afternoon. So Fred, Anthony? what Fred, what options does the jury have? Well, essentially, uh, Brandon Phillips is charged with first degree murder, the first degree murder of Larry Wellman back in October of 2015. They have essentially what's a, a checklist. It's, it's called a decision tree and it's a checklist and they have to meet certain criteria as they check them off. They can find him guilty of first degree murder. If they get through a, a couple on the first page, just to simplify it a little bit, but can't fill out all four boxes, they switch to the second page. Then it could be second degree. It could be a lesser charge of manslaughter. And if on the first page they can't fill out any of the boxes, of course, they have to find Brandon Phillips not guilty altogether. Uh, so we're two, two and a half days essentially of deliberations yesterday, today, and two hours on Tuesday afternoon. Still no verdict. The jurors are back at a local hotel, cut off from all communication, no cell phones, TV or radio. They'll be back here tomorrow morning to continue their deliberations at 9.30. Carolyn? Thanks, Fred. That's here and now's Fred Hutton reporting live. Well, the Premier's Chief of Staff admits he didn't file his lobbying paperwork on time when he was a lobbyist, and that appears to break the rules. After CBC News broke the story this morning, the issue came up in question period. Here and now's Peter Cowan breaks it down. The lobbying rules are clear. After you're finished lobbying for a company, you have 30 days to file it into the registry. Greg Mercer admits he didn't do that. 
Before he moved into Confederation Building to work for the Premier, he was lobbying for several companies. And in fact, he says for four of them, he didn't meet that deadline. In fact, he said in a statement to Here and Now, I take full responsibility for these late termination completion notifications and regret the confusion it has caused. So why is there confusion? Well, because just a month ago, the Premier was insisting that Greg Mercer followed all of the rules. He followed every single rule. That's the reason why we're having this discussion today. The, the, t the activity was re reported. The activity was registered. When it was terminated, when it was terminated, that was registered as well. Mercer is taking the blame for the Premier's comment as well, saying Dwight Ball only said that because of Mercer's assurances. And today, the Premier was up in the House of Assembly defending his Chief of Staff. And he's apologized for this, Mr. Speaker. That's what I'm saying. This was a human here. It was administrative here. I'm sure every member in this House at some point has missed something in terms of a notification. He's apologized for this, Mr. Speaker. The Premier also said today that the Conflict of Interest Committee is going to look at Mercer to make sure that his past lobbying efforts aren't a conflict with his current job. Peter Cowan, CBC News, St. John's. The man known as Farmer Jim is now officially a politician. Jim Lester was sworn in at Government House in St. John's this morning as this province's newest MHA. Lester represents Mount Pearl North in the legislature. He is a well-known farmer who owns and operates Lester's farm. And he won the district for the Progressive Conservatives in a by-election nearly three weeks ago. Lester says he'll be putting his background to use as the party's agri-foods critic. All right, Ryan, kind of wet. A lot of people yeah. excited about what the future brings. Messy conditions mm -hmm. on yeah, the way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now, Sunday's, again, what we're all looking towards in terms of the big system coming in, but uh, some unsettled weather to deal with before that. Uh, let's uh, start with the radar and the satellite picture and the current temperatures. They kind of tell the story. You can see where it's 4 or 5 degrees across the Avalon with some rain right now. We're clearing out in central Newfoundland. The onshore flurries have yet to develop along the west coast based on the radar anyway we will see those flurries develop this evening and then some snow squalls throughout the overnight hours tonight latest radar if you are hitting the roads over the next couple of hours be mindful there's uh, water on the roads and there's water coming down but the back edge of this is coming now sweeping through uh, almost to Terra Nova and across to the Buren Peninsula and so this will depart uh, through this evening into the overnight you can see some clearing and cooling certainly through the evening hours there are those onshore flurries and some snow squalls developing with those onshore winds tomorrow uh, it's going to be a blustery drive to work along the west coast we're looking at a chance of seeing some flurries mixed with showers across the Buren and the Avalon peninsulas into Friday afternoon chance of flurries in Central, quiet in Labrador, not so quiet as we work throughout the weekend, though, and we'll talk about that with your uh, full forecast coming up in a few minutes. Carolyn? Thanks, Ryan. Well, thousands are still trying to gain Indian status under the Halibut First Nation Band. Earlier this year, many applicants discovered they were unsuccessful in meeting all of the federal government requirements. Close to 13,000 people appealed, and the chief of the Halibut Band now says most will receive bad news. Here now is Colleen Connors explains. Denied, denied, denied. That's what these appeal letters are going to say, according to Chief Brendan Mitchell. He says it's unfortunate that many people did not pass these federal requirements to be part of the founding members of this landless band. So to date, in my view, the numbers have been low. I think a lot of people went into the appeals process with a high expectation, but those expectations and honestly will become disappointments for many. And that's sad. The Department of Indigenous and Northern Affairs says over 100,000 people applied for status and the majority were rejected. Many had to reapply after the controversial 2013 Supplemental Agreement. Applications had to meet certain requirements in a point system format, such as proving your connection to the Mi'kmaq culture. With myself and my two children, um, it was, mine was approved, my oldest who was eight, he was approved, and my youngest who was six was denied. Wanda Lee Payne received a denied letter in the mail for Alex. She says the lengthy, time-consuming application process doesn't change her connection to the Mi'kmaq culture. It's our, it's our, where we came from. And I mean, uh, the bloodline for us, I mean, it might go back a couple generations, especially for my kids, where it's their great-great-great-grandparents that it's coming from. But still, it's, it's a part of us and who we are. Receiving status is important. 
Being an identified member of Halibu shows connection to the Indian traditions and includes health and education benefits. When this whole process is said and done, the chief believes Halibu membership will be very low. In light of what I'm seeing and what I'm expecting, I would, I would say honestly to everyone here, I'm expecting the band size to be under 20,000. For those who win their appeal, they will likely be notified in January once their ancestry is confirmed. And for those who lose their appeals, well, this is the end of a decade-long process. Colleen Connors, CBC News, Corner Brook. All right, Ryan Snodden, just one more sleep. That's yes, right. but not for Santa Claus. No, it's at 18 more sleeps, but, you know, who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> it's only one more sleep, though, for our big Feed NL day at the Avalon Mall in St. John's. Yeah, that's right, and this is a great chance to remind people uh, what, we're up again, what we're up to again uh, this year. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Ryan Snodden and the Warm Fronts. <laughs> Captured the spirit mm. of the era. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my favorite story, by the way, is that uh, that studio audience was in this studio. Really? Back really? in the 70s, and uh, some people were picking out some family members. They knew they could uh, recognize them. Yeah, definitely. Right. So uh, pretty cool. We've been here for a long time, so yep. it was kind of cool to use that old footage. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Here Now is coming uh, from the mall tomorrow, but also uh, Ryan is going to co-host Crosstalk with me, so we'll be there That's at right. lunchtime tomorrow. Obviously, uh, using humor to help feed people is kind of a thing that, that actually works uh, quite well. So, yeah. hope a few laughs. Yeah, yeah. we're going to be flying by the seat of our pants. <laughs> really, that's safe yeah. to say. Yeah, yeah and uh, speaking about humor, a uh, few people are as good as, of course, the gang at 22 minutes. That's right. Here's their message about helping out the food banks this time of year. The appearance of three wise kings. What brings you here this night? We bring gifts to the Christ child. I am Balthazar of Arabia. I bring the gift of frankincense. I am Melchior of Persia. I bring the gift of myrrh. And I'm Dale of the Canadian Food Bank. I bring the gift of a hundred cans of Vienna sausages. Hey, eh? <laughs> There you go. So generous. Yeah, they're from all of us. No, it's not, actually. Yeah, I come from a magical faraway land called Guelph. And the people there are super friendly. They opened their hearts and they opened up their cupboards and they donated uh, all these delicious, juicy cocktail sausages. How does one eat so many? All kinds of ways. You can eat them like a, you know, like a little Vienna hot dog, you know? Oh, mmm. Or you can eat them like a Vienna Chia Pet. Remember that from the 80s? Huh? And that is the story of Dale, who was rightfully left out of the Bible and banished to eat canned foods for the rest of eternity. Oh, hi, I'm Susan Kent. Now, this was a fun sketch, but there was a message in it as well. The food banks might be too nice to say this, but we're not. Give them money. 
They don't need more cans. They need money. So do them a favor and keep your nasty little wieners out of their donation boxes. Thank you. A local company really liked a story this week that we had about need something, got something. That's Carla Cotty's group. And now that company has got something for Carla. Stay tuned. This week on Here and Now, we introduce you to Carla Crotty, and she has a group that tries to find items for people who need particular items. Debbie Cooper met with her in CBS with some of her helpers, and we told you that story. And since then, there's been a development, and so we've got Carla here. What was the reaction? Uh, the reaction, Anthony, has been really good, um, but overwhelming, to be honest. Uh, I can't keep up with messages uh, of support from the community, people still reaching, reaching out who need help. Um, and uh, really the response has been just, uh, you know, positive. People, I think, really like the idea of a feel-good story this time of year. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, we are in this building for a particular reason. What did Winmar say to you? Um, I got a call this morning from uh, Bonnie here at Winmar, one that I certainly didn't expect to receive. Um, they've graciously offered up uh, their space here uh, at their building on Pippi Place 
So you mean that wear room space? They're, they've got warehouse space here. So they're going to accept donations for our Christmas, Christmas initiative for the next couple of weeks. Um, they've also offered up the use of one of their cube vans and two employees to help us with deliveries mm -hmm. to the families. So a vehicle and labor. All right. Well, that's a fairly generous thing. Uh, Bonnie and Troy, uh, why did Carla's story prompt this reaction? Well, when I read the story, I thought this is something that Wimmer could absolutely help out with. And that's what we like to do. Okay. And Troy, was there a particular aspect of the story that interested you? We have resources that we can donate, be it time, personnel, a vehicle. And I think that that's something that has a big impact as opposed to, let's say, a, a check handed over to someone that how they still have to come up with these resources. So, I mean, we have it. Right. This is a time of year that we can donate it and it just seemed like a great cause. So Carla, if you actually have a vehicle and two of Santa's helpers uh, plus a warehouse space, how is that going to help you with, uh, with your group? Um, it, well, it makes this Christmas bitch uh, a whole lot easier. Um, you know, it allows the public to have a ready-made spot to drop donations off and allows us as volunteers then to have all of those donations in one spot so that we can try and put them all together and, right. and get them doled out to families. So your place in CBS again kind of filled up with stuff? My living room can only hold so much, <laughs> believe it or not, yeah. Yeah. So just to uh, wind things down, so there's so many good causes and different things, uh, especially at Christmas time. And Carla, of course, had this thing going all year long. Mm -hmm. um, was there a particular aspect of it that sort of made you think, you know what, I think Winmar wants to help this? Well, I joined the group actually a few weeks ago, and I've been following the group, and I see that there is such a great need out there for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is where we are. So did you have to volunteer people or did people automatically volunteer? Oh, no, people were no it's, it's a niche that was easy to fill. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you as well. And Carla, uh, congratulations and uh, good luck as the group moves forward. Thanks very much, Anthony. A lot of giving there. Yeah, and it's uh, it's interesting because Carla started this, you know, earlier in, in this year, and it's not just a Christmas time thing, okay. but obviously after the thing was on and Debbie did the interview, there was a lot of interest. So really nice to see a local company come and uh, help out for a, a really good cause. A very special visitor for some very special children. Santa is here at the Janeway today, and he left the reindeer at home.
Day is almost here. Friday is Feed NL Day, and CBC will be here at the Avalon Mall from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., taking your donations and wrapping your gifts. Here now, we'll be broadcasting live from 6 to 7 here at the mall, and it's sure to be a special show with performances by the Shalloway Choir. So we hope you can join us here at the Avalon Mall this Friday. It's sure to be a great day, isn't it, Giver? It sure is, Ryan. How did you do that? It's Christmas magic. Huh. <laughs> uh, beautiful picture here, and that was uh, actually submitted to my page uh, earlier today by Bell Collins. A uh, cold, frozen day in the Massey Drive area. Oh, pretty. Gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, they're just foaming at the mouth with the idea of winter in western Newfoundland. <laughs> they really are. Uh, of course, they love winter out w on the west coast. Most, yeah. anyway, do. Uh, Not so much. Well, we don't have it. Here in the east, yeah, yeah, it's kind of give or take. Yeah, yeah, we'll take it. Maybe just like the day before Christmas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of folks uh, uh, have that, that idea. Unfortunately, uh, western Newfoundland, big changes for the Sunday forecast. What looked like perhaps all or mostly snow is now looking like a snow to rain event for right. the west coast as well on sunday so we're going to dive into that uh why don't we start though with uh, current temperatures and have a look uh actually highs today uh note the four or five degrees across the board for the island and even two degrees happy valley goose bay and mccova now look at your current temperatures minus three in happy valley goose bay minus one in corner brook four on the plus side in St. John's where the temperatures are holding, but the general theme here has been the colder air sliding back in on the other side of this cold front, dropping the temperatures. Now we're still hanging on to some rain here across the Avalon as the cold front has been moving from west to east, and that'll continue for the next couple of hours if you're heading out. If you're heading out along the west coast, it's going to be the onshore flurries and snow squalls that are gonna fire up along the west coast through the overnight tonight. There's the latest radar returns which show that rain, st the back edge starting to slide through Terra Nova and across the Buren Peninsula. And those flurries, couple of flurries, perhaps in the mix as early as the next hour or so, really starting to develop late evening into the overnight. And as those winds line up at the surface and aloft, this is where we'll have the better chance of some snow squalls for your Friday morning drive along the west coast of the island. Temperatures near minus six in central. St. John's is a quiet start, maybe a few flurries even as early as 6, 7 a.m. for the Buren Peninsula. And it's a cool, quiet start across Labrador. Now watch as we roll throughout the morning tomorrow, that chance of showers and even a wet flurry in the mix pushes towards the Avalon by lunchtime. Uh, Chances some squalls even towards the Buren Peninsula, Fortune Bay, but the best chance certainly along that west coast. We're talking about the potential through Friday through uh, in that two to five centimeter range for most local amounts could add up to 10 to 15 centimeters again locally in the especially in the higher elevations in the gross morn area by the end of the day on friday winds are going to be gusting near 50 kilometers per hour so it's going to be kind of a blustery day and if you're heading out on the roads you want to Definitely keep that in mind that you could encounter some blustery conditions uh, in the west and with those flurry potentials even into central parts of Newfoundland. Highs near 3 degrees in the southeast and in Labrador it's a very quiet Friday. Pretty nice chance of a flurry in the west, but generally it's going to be a very nice day. Now as we move into the weekend time period, uh, a little disturbance tracking in on the leading edge of this next system is going to be bringing some flurries into the morning for the Avalon, Clarenville, Bonavista, the southeast with the change to showers into the afternoon afternoon. Isolated flurry chances, central and western Newfoundland, and another quiet one for Saturday across Labrador. Uh, again, isolated flurry chances, but very, very quiet. You can see where temperatures will nose above the freezing mark for the Buren and the Avalon. Saturday evening into the overnight, our next system will be moving in. Looks like we'll see some mixing for the Avalon and the southeast, but I think it's a pretty quick mix over. Accumulation uh, won't be much for the Avalon and the Beeren Peninsula's best chance of accumulation will be Terranova, Gander, Central Newfoundland towards Cornerbrook and the northwest. But again, with a storm track now looking set to move over the Gulf of St. Lawrence, it's going to be a change to rain for most of the island. Heavy rain potential for the east, especially the Buren, Clarenville, Bonavista, and across the Avalon. And look at those winds gusting in from the south. 
That's why my forecast high for Sunday is 14 degrees for the Buren and the Avalon. So yeah, any Saturday night snow will be wiped out. Even high single digits possible uh, as far west as Cornerbrook now. Uh, again, snow, heavy snow potential. Happy Valley Goose Bay to Cartwright. And we'll talk more about this with your long range forecast coming up in a few minutes. Carolyn. I'll take 14 degrees. Thank you very much, Ryan. Well, Santa Claus made a grand entrance at the Janeway Hospital today. Instead of riding with his reindeer, a search and rescue helicopter dropped him off to the delight of all the children waiting anxiously to meet him. Santa's elves from 103 in Gander said, Santa, we'd like to take you in to the hospital. We have a little more horsepower than the reindeer, so <laughs> we'll share the load as they have a big job on uh, Christmas. So Santa's here to see all the girls and boys. Oh, there is nothing more important for Santa than to keep the dream alive for little girls and boys all over the world. And Santa had a very special uh, day planned, and it's great to be here. <laughs> Santa, you must be so busy right now. It's absolutely wonderful. So how are you finding the time to come here? Mrs. Claus has got me organized beautifully. The elves are all set, and there's some wonderful people that help Santa out. We had to come and see you. Look. Teddy wanted to come and say hello. He talked to me about St. Nicholas Day and what church I was in. And he gave you a present. What's the present? Chocolate pencils. But you had something to give him too, right? A very important something. Can you tell us what that was? Christmas letters. And what was in the letter? What I wanted for Christmas. Can you tell us what you want for Christmas? Something, I wanted a surprise. What kind of surprise? I don't know. Just anything. Your eyes are gorgeous. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Nevea, it's heaven spelled backwards. I think she'll like them. Seems pretty comfortable, eh? Hey, girlies. Nice to know that they actually do stuff with the kids, even though they're in the hospital. Santa is going to see all the children that are throughout the building, either as inpatients or outpatients. So they could be in our NICU, in our PICU, on our medicine uh, surgery units. Anywhere there's a little child, he'll drop by. And this event today is so special because we're so pleased to have the Gander Search and Rescue Squadron with us as well. They provide excellent service to us for our sick children transporting across the province. And it's such a special treat to have Santa arrive that way. And the reindeer don't mind that you left them at home? They're resting. They're resting. But of they things are. are looking good. We're, we're counting on, 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 on the weather people. Things are looking good. Santa's all ready. No pressure, right? Counting Ryan. on the weather people, uh, <laughs> Ryan Stodden. I guess uh, Ryan had best deliver a pretty good forecaster. He's going to get one of those big lumps of coals mm -hmm. in his stocking. So he's <laughs> counting on you, Ryan. Uh oh. <laughs> Team Guju has the competition spinning. We'll show you why.
Welcome back to Here and Now. Well, Team Guju now sits tied in second place at the Roar of the Rings competition in Ottawa. Last night, Guju downed Winnipeg's Mike McEwen by a score of 8 to 3. Steals now. Oh, Guju oh, oh, and the last. Oh, yeah. Quiet tap. In an end that was controlled by McEwen. Get it by. Now we have to tap it. Oh, very nice. Well, Guju has only two round robin games remaining before the playoffs begin. Tonight at 8.30 Island Time, he takes on Saskatchewan's Steve Laycock. Well, with four game wins under their belt, the St. John's Edge are riding high. The team announced today that coach Jeff Dunlap has been promoted to general manager and he signed on for an additional two years. Yes, more than 12,000 fans turned up for those home games and all that success has team owners looking to expand beyond, bas beyond basketball. This isn't about trying to pay a mortgage or this isn't about I got to make money on it. This really is a legacy scenario. They were blown away with the fans, with the reaction. You know, we had over 12,000 people in, in four games. I, I'm very serious when I say to you, the strategy is entertainment year round. And, and there are serious discussions about do we bring soccer or do we bring football? You know, there's a couple of options out there. There's indoor football and there's outdoor football. And, um, you can draw your own conclusions. Uh, but I want everybody to understand our commitment to basketball is to be the best team in the league. We have the best people uh, and we're delighted to have Jeff now as our, our not only our coach but as GM. I, I think it's been absolutely fantastic. I think these fans have, have shown up in droves for us to sell out that first game and then to come back midweek these last two games and have really, really good crowds. And you know, I, I tell the guys before every game, I just want to get better every game. You know, every day we got to get better. We got to strive to run the offense a little bit better, execute a little bit better. You know, I thought that uh, the fourth game of the four at home was the best game. I thought we shared the ball unbelievably well. We had nine players in double figures. And if you have that kind of distribution and that kind of teamwork, that's what makes basketball successful. So I was very pleased. Yeah, we're headed in the right direction. Off to a good start mm, for sure. Absolutely. Well, no word yet, but Edge owner John Graham says any hockey team brought in would likely be part of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Mm -hmm. And still with sports, according to his coaches, Brett Smith's strong point is his serve. Smith is a young man who is not letting cerebral palsy get in the way of his desire to be an athlete. Absolutely not. Brett's a grade 9 student at Heritage Coll uh, Collegiate in Lethbridge on the Bonavista Peninsula, and he not only plays on his school's volleyball team, but he also competes in tournaments and plays a bunch of other sports on the side. Here now is Garrett Barry sat in on one of Smith's volleyball practices. I've been playing since grade four. I just adjusted to the way I bump with, with one arm. It's a challenge, yes, but I was willing to take Take that challenge and try and do it. He was just barely 28 weeks when he was born. He had a significant bleed in his brain, so the damage is done. It can't be repaired. It'll never get worse, but it can't be repaired. He's never known anything different. You know, that child has fallen a million times in his life. I'm sure he has, especially when he was younger. And I would just look at him and say, get up. You have to get up. You have to figure out how to get up. And he figured out how to get up, and he's been doing it ever since. Sometimes she says I'm her hero because I'm so athletic. I want to keep trying at stuff, and I never stop trying. We're not always going to be there. You know, if that's just the nature of life, right? Parents are gone before their kids for the most part. So we need to equip him with every tool that we can so that he'll be successful in life, whatever he chooses to do. We tried to instill in him, you've got to learn to get up and stand on your own two feet. And so far, so good. The biggest reason I play is because of my friends. They're so supportive and then they kind of motivate me to keep trying. My advice to other people is don't underestimate yourself. You have to keep trying and trying and trying. I kind of think that people realize now, after all the years of me playing, and I'm not going to give up.
impressive young man. Very much so. Don't give up. Don't give, Don't up. give up. Great advice. Ah, the Babylon Mall, that classic <laughs> gets an anniversary makeover up next. Hello, Ryan. Oh, hi. Who are you? I'm Giver the Moose. Uh, how goes the gift wrapping? Uh, not too bad, thanks. What do you think? Uh, the forecast? Partly crummy with scattered packages. <laughs> you better practice the wrapping because we're heading off to the Avalon Mall for Feed and L Day on December the 8th. How did you get the name Giver? Well, we want all generous people to really give her on Feed and L Day, and you can buy me for just $10. And all the proceeds, 100%, support the Community Food Sharing Association. Oh, isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Well, definitely. Well, you know what, Giver? What? Uh, I think you would make a pretty good stocking stuffer. Wait, 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 wait a second. I'm trying to see the wall. Well, time now to introduce our young athlete of the day. This is Cruz Randall of Great Bra. Cruz is seven years old and plays hockey with the St. Anthony Polar's Novus Two Division. And this is Cruz's fifth year playing hockey and his position, he's a forward. Awesome job, Cruz. You're today's young athlete of the day. All right, a great picture here. All this right. was taken uh, today by Ron Burton, wow. and he says, quote, use caution on the highway near the St. Anthony Airport, folks. Santa's reindeer are feeding and preparing for their busy night on the 24th. <laughs> wow. Said he thinks he saw one with a red nose, and, uh, you know, they do, they come out for Amazing. the salt, salt on the roads, That's right? right? That's what it is, yeah. And uh, so definitely, yeah. Looks Having like a tryout for the December 24th. <laughs> see, if you can make, see if you can make the team. That's yeah. fantastic. Wow. A lot of, they got to do a lot of flying on the 24th. Yes. Yes. Really, Need that protein. Got to bulk up. Absolutely, for sure.
Uh, and, you know, you had a great tweet there of Santa on skis saying you were hoping that... Uh, Someday Ryan will give us a forecast where we can go skiing, even though I know Carolyn's really happy with that 14 degrees for yeah. Sunday. Well, to which yeah. I replied on uh, Twitter, if uh, Santa's coming here to eastern Newfoundland on Sunday, those better be water skis because uh, wow. it's, uh, it's going to be a pretty heavy rainfall. Uh, certainly the possibility of 50 millimeters or more for Whoa. eastern parts of Newfoundland at plus the 14 degrees, and you were talking about It'll bring be on 14. But the wind is going to be howling, oh. it's going to be raining, and so, uh, All yeah, right. not really 14, let's go for a walk kind of 14. Darn. 14, let's go for a walk <laughs> kind of 14. Uh, anyway, let's have a look at the satellite and radar picture. And again, this cold front is bringing snow, look at the radar, to Texas right now. The white, uh, the green is rain, the pink is mixed, and that white on top of the uh, uh, cloud cover there, right down there, that is Texas seeing snowfall. Uh, that is how far the cold air is pushing down right now. Temperatures into the single digits there, obviously. And as we uh, take a look, that's the same front that is rolling through our neck of the woods. And certainly, we are going to see a cool down over the next well, 12 hours or so, temperatures bottoming out tonight. And as we work into the Friday forecast, in case you miss the next three days, there's a little snapshot for you. Temperatures near the freezing mark for most tomorrow, but for the Beard and the Avalon up to three degrees, Saturday we'll see a little bit of light snowfall uh, for Saturday morning across the Avalon and even possibly the Buren, but it's a mix over to some showers for Saturday afternoon as temperatures get up to around two or three degrees. And yeah, there is the, definitely an anomaly for Sunday 14 in the forecast right now uh, and you can see in Labrador a much different story much cooler air but the southeast may see plus side temps depending on the track of this one for Sunday as well and again the track is going to be key the latest ideas have been keeping the storm track further to the west and so better chance of accumulating snow up through the northeast parts of the U.S. but the heavy snow zone now looking set for New Brunswick and then up into Labrador with the island looking like a again a mix for Saturday night into Sunday morning for the Avalon, the Buren and then central parts of Newfoundland through Sunday morning seeing that transition from perhaps shovel shovel worthy snow 10 plus centimeters not out of the question with this we'll nail that down in the next 24 hours. But uh, for even the northern peninsula, now looking like a transition from snow to rain through Sunday afternoon. Very strong winds. It looks like initially Sunday afternoon, the heaviest rain uh, for central parts of Newfoundland, edging over towards eastern Newfoundland through Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening. And again, snow and wind for the coast of Labrador back into Happy Valley Goose Bay, where I think the bullseye will be for snow based on this latest uh, tracks, uh, with, which forecast models have a pretty good idea on, from Makovic to Cartwright back to Happy Valley Goose Bay. Uh, that'll be where we see the heaviest snowfall potential. Bit of mixing back in the forecast there as we work into Monday. So there's a snapshot. Again, that snow rain line is further west uh, than it was 24 hours ago with the heavy snow potential moving back west as well uh, into Labrador with that heavy uh, rain still on the menu for eastern parts of Newfoundland. We go back to reality through next week. That said, looks like another warm push for Wednesday, colder air pushing back in for Thursday, uh, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, some earlier indications that for perhaps we'd see a very cold week uh, may not come to fruition until late uh, next week across eastern parts of Newfoundland. And you can see in Labrador some pretty chilly temps, especially uh, through that Monday, Tuesday time period in Lab West. Well, there is a great remake video making oh, yeah. the rounds today, and uh, it's getting a lot of attention on social media. Yeah, many of you remember the wonderful grand band hit Babylon Mall from 1980, and it was a parody on, on the popularity of the Avalon Mall and included the immortal lyric, parking's free, but you got to pay to pee at the mall. <laughs> uh, well, now, in celebration of its 50th anniversary, mall managers have re-recorded that video with many of the original members of WGB. Mm -hmm. And filling in for the late, great Tommy Sexton, of course, is Mark Critch. Just have a look.
Mr. Budgel? <laughs> oh my oh, that's goodness. That's wonderful. It's a new classic yeah. for and sure. It, yep, it's going to do well. And as you saw, there all the proceeds from the sale of the song go to the uh, Tommy Sexton Center. And in that video, you could see Mark Rich. What a Amelia, cast. I know, yeah, right? Yeah. Mark Rich was there, Amelia Curran, Geraldine Hollett from The Once. That's right. Plus Paul Kinsman, Billy Sutton, and of course the original wonderful Grand Band members, Sandy Morris, Glenn Simmons, Boomer Stamp, and Greg Malone, of course, as Mr. Bunchell. Well, turning now to national and international news, firefighters are struggling for a fourth day to get the upper hand on wildfires in Southern California. One of the biggest challenges for firefighters is the wind. The winds are blowing westward from the California desert, fanning flames faster than crews can extinguish them. Forecasters are predicting gusts of more than 125 kilometers per hour. That and the bone dry vegetation are causing the fires to spread at extreme rates. But the National Weather Service says those winds could diminish Friday into Saturday. The fires have destroyed more than 300 homes so far. And across the state, thousands of people have been forced from their homes, sometimes with just minutes of notice. You had to get out of here because the, the fires was very obviously going to come over here. Whole mountain is on fire. I'm like, oh my God, this is insane. Now this home, or rather what's left of it, is in the ritzy Bel Air neighborhood. The Skirball fire raced down surrounding slopes in the early morning and attacked the home. Helicopters are dropping waters on the ridges as more than 350 firefighters try to save homes. More than 46,000 people have been ordered to leave the surrounding neighborhoods. A cold evening walk in rural Manitoba on Monday became a rescue mission for an RCMP canine and his human partner. Constable Taylor Burns explains how Hicks became a hero. The other night we were just out exercising uh, as we do uh, every night. Uh, we weren't on duty at the time and uh, I could tell that the dog had gotten into some animal odor. Uh, just his demeanor had changed and he was kind of moving towards something uh, following a scent cone. And uh, he stopped at what looked like a chunk of ice on the, uh, on the side of the road. Uh, it was really windy, it was snowing and uh, I told him to leave it. He came back to me and he ran back to the, uh, ran back to it right away. And as I was walking up, I had a headlamp on, it was dark out and uh, I could see two eyes looking at me and it started to meow. So I picked it up, we took that home, got it uh, in a warm spot and then uh, went back out. There was another cat out there. So we went and got another one. They were just two little kittens. And the following morning I took them into uh, work and one of our PS staff uh, took care of them. It's not his his job, it's just that's animal instinct right coming out in him. Uh, but other than that, no, his his sole role is, uh, is uh, narcotics detection. Right, so when it's not narcotics, he's uh, saving kittens. The, they were checked out by a vet. They're on antibiotics right now and apparently they're going to be okay. Oh, good. Sweet little things. Oh. Poor creatures. Our viewer picture of the day it comes to us from Eastern Newfoundland. In fact, I'll narrow it down. This was taken on the Avalon Peninsula. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Pretty tough one though. Many beautiful spots uh, on the Avalon that could look just like this. If you could uh, take Poo a guess and we'll reveal after the break. Pooch Cove. Oh, oh. no. Oh. Close. Pretty good <laughs> guess though.
Welcome back to Here and Now. Well, a skunk in Ottawa is raising quite the stink in more ways than one. Mm -hmm. This little guy got itself stranded on the ice of the Rideau Canal, and it apparently fell over the canal's concrete edge onto that thin oh. ice below. And as the day warmed up, the ice started to melt. <gasps> And there he goes, trapping the little skunk. Oh my goodness, people tried to uh, come to the rescue of the poor little skunk. Uh, but apparently the skunk has a bit of an attitude. It retreated into a nearby pipe and let loose the way <laughs> skunks do. <laughs> so res uh, rescuers have backed off, hoping the skunk can find its own way to safety. Yeah. Oh, I hope it does. Yeah, indeed. It's got to work on his front crawl a little bit, though. Oh. <laughs> poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the toughest creature to rescue. A very difficult yeah. to rescue. Yeah. Yeah, notice how people keep their distance. Yeah, that's <laughs> that right. That in a porcupine yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty difficult. Yeah, definitely. Okay, uh, quick uh, look again at our viewer picture of the day. Any final guesses? Uh, let's hear them now. We've got uh, Eastern Newfoundland as, uh, uh, again, in the Avalon oh. Peninsula. It comes from Old Perlican. Oh. Lovely. And a beautiful picture there, white picket fence, and uh, I believe yeah. I do have a name here, I do. Uh, this was taken by Leah Froud and Chess Pike. Right. Oh, what a beautiful sunrise. One, held the, one sunset. held the camera, the other pushed the button, so they get dual credits That's for right. this one. That's right, yeah, I had to give credit to both. So. That's beautiful. I know I've seen that island. That's, uh, I should have, wish I should have been thinking harder. Huh. Next one. Yeah. Well, that's it for us. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. See you down day yep. tomorrow. Yes, yep. that's right. We'll see you tomorrow.